Hello guys and welcome. As always, I'm Vincent from Mr. Lots Model Making and this is part 3, turret assembly. So without further ado, let's go to the bench. And we're at the bench. So I've got all the parts prepped as usual. Um, I'll, you know, straight off note that I will not be detailing the inside of the cockpit. Um, I'll basically be putting it together. Uh, closing it up and not bother painting it because I find the detail is quite lacking and I was planning on doing a turret open but um, yeah you know that kind of went the way the dodo so as you can see I've always uh, I've, I've also um, gone for the aluminium barrel now I will say it's a one-piece mold with just the muzzle brake um, as a separate piece but there's something about uh, an aluminium barrel, especially one this size is like 3-4 euro. So, um, yeah, and there's rifling on the inside, you know, it, it, it actually looks like a gun. So, uh, and as you can see, so I'll quickly pause on this one. That's how it fits in. It basically slides into the little uh, a hole there. Um, so what I've, what I've basically done, I won't be showing that in the video, but you basically put the plastic part on the end there's only one way it can go together like so and then just uh, I tapped the end uh, I, I tapped it home basically after putting a teeny tiny dollop, dollop of uh, super glue in there so what are we up to um, so we've got the, the turret is basically molded in two halves uh, with uh, a separate turret roof and then a couple of bits that go on the inside uh, now I'll put all the bits in but the most important bits for me are what keeps the the gun the you know the what's the word the breech and stuff like that in because uh, that's gonna affect the outside obviously so first of all what we need to do is um, put together the breech blocks as you can see I've still got the nubs on there I'll just be snipping those off because again like I said in the beginning not really that bothered about um, you know the, the inside detail because I was going to do a turret uh, a hatch open commander sticking out but even the inside of the hatch there's no no detail whatsoever so I, yeah yeah I wanted to keep the build simple so rather than go ham on aftermarket or scratch building I figured you know I'm just gonna show it as is now of course if you want to do the inside if you are happy with a limited detail or you're planning on adding some yourself go right ahead I'll be showing all the steps to put it together the only difference is you'll be painting it so this is the uh, the actual swivel uh, point on it so that slides in there all slots nicely together what I have noticed is that you need to apply a fair bit of uh, force to get it, you know, seated properly and, and get everything nice and straight. So keep that in mind. Again, especially important if you are bothered about the inside detail. Because, in all honesty, I could have just put the little uh, swivel block in and then built up what goes on the outside uh, on that. So um, another point to note with this turret is that there is casting textures, but more on that later because we are going to do something interesting with it. And here you can see me tap the uh, the swivel block uh, home. I do apologize, this is a bit of uh, off camera because I was applying all the pressures to it um, and then that's that's what goes on the outside where the um, the part where the barrel goes in will actually mount onto now the point of note is that the, you might just be able to make it out there there are weld details on there so when you glue the part that goes on top of that in be mindful you don't spooge out too much sp uh, too much goo because it might actually ruin those uh, nice details so these are the two halves we need to put together locator holes and the other side has locator pins quite easy uh, not to worry about the sink marks because that's a covered up part uh, anyway it's it 
it's not going to be visible no matter how you build it at it open or closed and there you go that's that's really all you need to do bit of glue in the, in the holes and then go back with your glue and put that in the um, the seam it's quite tiny pins so I had to align that as you can see there is a bit of seam work uh, to do there now because of that I didn't perfectly sand away the nubs on the bottom either because I knew that it's going to be working the seam and the nubs are right next to that so didn't really see the point in, in already sanding it perfectly flat rather have one big surface and sand the seam line and both the nub out uh, in, in you know in the same moment and there you go and that's how it assembles so we'll put glue on here like I said don't squish it down so it splooges out uh, mm, melting plastic um, as you would do with normal seam because we've got that raised detail of a weld um, going on there so we want to preserve that you can see I'm trying very carefully only just putting some glue out now it looks like I'm applying tons of pressure here but I'm, I'm really not it's just so both sides are nice and straight that's basically what you see me doing here is align that entire breech assembly that we've got so far just skip ahead slightly here and fast forward you can see me preparing my uh, little plastic lid that I put uh, my glues on uh, you know when I'm working super glue or two part epoxy that's where it goes on to uh, so I can get my toothpick in there and then you know apply it and there we go after tapping it home and sliding that top part in again I apologize for not filming it it is an oversight but it is a very easy step and and that's the end result tap home the barrel into the little hole where the plastic counterpart would go and then put the plastic uh, put the plastic piece on the uh, sub assembly we've uh, just done in the first part of the video but you can see that it's a lovely detail it's that um, the raised edge around uh, well it's not really a muzzle brake but so you know what I'm talking about on the top of, of the barrel uh, you know that's crisp which you wouldn't get put, um, with the plastic parts uh, I think because of you applying glue there basically what I'm doing now is checking alignment because I'll be honest the fit between the breech block and the point where the what I'm calling the swivel block because that that's where the whole assembly swivels um yeah not the greatest of alignments if I'm honest not the greatest of alignments at all but um, so you can see I've glued the seats in there I've not really shown that because it's not important it is however quite easy and you should see me do it for the other one though so uh, bear in mind with that and this is just me test fitting the uh, swivel, the, the pins on the swivel block. I don't know if I should call it a swivel block, but it swivels and it's in a block shape, so there you go. And this is, um, I think, part of the um, elevation mechanism for the gun on the real thing, but it's not really functional, it's really there again to hold in what needs to rotate, more or less. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure what it does there and I'm actually almost convinced you could probably do it without 
Um, anyway, I've put it in. There you go. Yeah, so I'm not showing little chairs. Uh, yeah, pausing right there though, you can actually see there's little triangles uh, molded onto the two turret halves and then there are triangular slots on the chair parts that go on that go on there and then the slots together. That's, that's all there is to it, that's why I didn't show it. Um, again, it shows lackluster detail a bit, but it's an older kit. Uh, nowadays I think it's they do a production run of it every now and again slightly updated but it's it's one of those to me a tank it's that costs you uh, about 20 euro quid uh, you know a little over 20 dollars something like that well depending on US pricing which I'm not that aware of so this is the two turret halves going together seam on the back uh, not really anything to deal with on the front except the turret ring itself um, that has a little seam we need to close up and but then that gap does need to go because there's other parts going on there so that's the, the back plate that you would have on the real thing well depending on what year, year what factory it's made in um, but that part is actually lacking in casting detail uh, which the real thing did have so we'll be going back to that later and correcting some flaws on that so be generous with the glue again you'll see a slight nub here but it, because it's to that seam you know might as well sand that in one hole and get a nice smooth finish there we go clearly tell the lack of casting detail on that one and from the surviving examples that had this um, manufactured of turret uh, uh, of 76 millimeters turret on it yes there was a casting detail or a rolling de a detail from the casting rolling I don't know what they did with it but anyway the manufacturing process left a, uh, a, a sort of pitted surface as, uh, as if it were casted so was it cast and rolled? I don't know. I'm just trying to replicate the actual vehicle. So there's a little part that goes in there so to close up that gap because as you can see it, it's a bit nasty. Um, there, it's not a perfect fit that part so you need to go back and fill with either Sprugu or if you're more like me and you prefer your uh, ready to use putties uh, you know, go in with your Mr. Surfacer or your Mr. Dissolved Putty uh, and fill it up. You know, and sand it into alignment. You can see me go in with the toothpick, trying to get it as uh, as decent as possible, basically. squeeze it out because there's still some give on the on the stuff we did earlier so I'm trying to squeeze it together um, but yeah it's not a perfect fit at all you'll see me fiddling about a bit to get that alignment uh, correct because again there is still some some give and everything so might as well get it straight as possible. So I'm gonna fast forward this bit or cut out sections. So uh, this will go a bit high speed. As a small side note while we're fast forwarding this, you can actually see the turret hatch uh, on, on the uh, roof and it's upside down so you're actually looking at the inside and you can see there is no detail on the inside of that turret hatch worth mentioning in the sink march on it and uh, yeah so here I am cleaning up with Mr. Uh, not Mr. Cement S with the uh, MIG extra thin 
just because I like to brush in, in those uh, little nooks and crannies because you can get it to follow the contours rather nicely. Right, on to the next bit, the turret roof. Um, so I've already put the, the, that periscope detail is on there anyway, but on the other side there, have, uh, uh, there is of course the actual um, looking, looking glass, vision port, I did, uh, binoculars, I don't know. Quite, um, don't quite know how to say it, uh, probably know the correct term for it, but yeah, I've glued, that was a separate piece. I have glued that in, but it's just a half moon uh, shaped pin, uh, with a half moon shaped uh, locator hole, so it's pretty straightforward to figure out where it goes together if you do want to put it on there. I'm gluing it from the inside, just a, li a little drop of that glue and let it run around because I don't want anything splooging out because you know it, it's a turret, it's a turret hatch, it needs to look as if it still can open even though it doesn't. I'll just squeeze it gently see if there's no movement try to seal up all the gaps you can which is what I'm doing right here now as you can see on the back plate the fit it isn't perfect but what we'll do is um, fill that in with a bit of filler sand it flat and we're actually gonna uh, rescribe some of the panel lines just to show that yes this is a separate panel that's bolted on rather than uh, welded in right that's it that's more or less how it's going to look just need to get a couple of those details I mentioned on there and um, yeah we'll get that that's, that's basically gonna be it and so on to the next steps Right, and after a bit of fiddling, because it's tight fit, uh, that's the turret on, and this is going to be the end result that goes into the spray booth, more or less. Um, some details we need, we still need to figure out, but I can take the turret back off for that. Just wanted to uh, show this to you guys uh, at this point, because I mean, look at it; it does look good, doesn't it? Even for an older kit, you know. Don't mind the inside details and the couple of flaws on the outside, it just looks good. Uh, a bit of a weird edit here, but we are going to put on the uh, lifting eyes for the turret. Which are these little teeny tiny parts, uh, which I, for obvious reasons, left on the screws because they are just so darn tiny. So quickly snip them off, there's no need on the nubbing, you can just... Because there's a little stem, a little pin that goes into the holes. You can just, and that's on the end of that pin is where the nub would be. So you can just cut it off to the part because that's going to be glued up anyway. Now do be careful you don't cut the pin off too far because it, it might be difficult uh, to see where the pen, pin ends and the nub begins. Just take my tweezers. Uh, that's a little hole it needs to go into. Obviously failing because there's a bit of sanding dust in there. And these are, of course, uh, a bit fiddly. I can see it's a bit loose, but... Uh, no. That'll be fixed once the glue's on. Now the easier part is actually to put a bit of glue in the hole first, because that way you weaken the plastic and you'll get a nice tight fit and it'll slide all the way home. Which this one really didn't, which is why I'm going in with the, with the back end of my tweezers, gently pushing it down. And now aligning it. 
because what you want to do is imagine a triangle right and imagine that these are actual little mirrors reflecting a laser beam in the triangle that's sort of how you you know that's sort of how you need to arrange the openings on the eye, uh, on, on the lifting eyes because each one is going to hold a cable that goes to a central uh, that goes to a lifting hook and it will be pointing towards that lifting hook uh, because of that I'll, I'll visually explain that in a minute with my uh, tweezers don't worry about that so since we're not a fan of repeat parts on this channel uh, I am going to quickly fast forward Right, and that's them aligned, so what you want to do is, there's a cable going from there to the center, you know, that way, and from the other two as well, and that's why you need to, you know, figure out the uh, rotation. Yep, that's what I'm trying to explain here visually, <laughs> you know, a lifting hook is more or less in the center of that roof, and that's where your cables will be aimed towards. So on the real thing, this only has four bolts, uh, to me is more than six, so what we need to do is basically uh, cut off these bolts. Now the grey, that's Mr. Surface's stippled on to represent the casting detail, but we'll, we'll get to that in a bit, because obviously after doing, getting rid of these, I will need to um, fix those areas. Just another time for a bit of quick fast forwarding here. And this is the next interesting part where I take my little scribe and redo that uh, that panel line that you would have on the real thing. So quickly fix that again. Which is also something you need to do after you uh, fill out the little gaps on the top of it, fix that alignment. Now don't, don't you know, score a gouge in it. Uh, it, it needs to be faint because the, the it should be a reasonable fit on the real thing, obviously. You won't be able to put your uh, finger in there. But neither is it uh, a hair's width that you wouldn't see on a model. Right now I'm uh, preparing a, a ratty old brush with stiff, rough bristles in my Master Surfacer 500 and what I'll do now, put the bristles in there, rub it off slightly on a paper so you don't have, have too much on your brush and then just uh, stipple it on. That's all we're doing here, stippling it on like that. You know, and then if there's a specks of green showing through, don't worry, because that means that you're creating an uneven surface. Um, you don't want a smooth cover. Uh, you want that casting texture that is on the uh, on the other parts of the turret already represented. Yeah. 
and there we go that's that's all there is to it now I do need to uh, at this point in the video I still have to do some research if the turret roof was um, had a casting had a texture to it as well or if it was just uh, a nice uh, smooth uh, piece of uh, plate not that it rolled into shape and cut into shape obviously so what we're going to do now is uh, scrape a bit of the stuff away like this little pistol port where this would be a rubber bung on the real thing covering up a pistol port uh, no not a rubber bung, <laughs> an armored one and um, that's that's all we're doing just scraping away that Mr. Surfacer so you get a nice smooth detail again as that part would be off camera I'll also be uh, using a cotton bud ever so slightly moistened in enamel uh, not enamel thinners, lacquer thinners and cleaning up the little bolt details voila and that's all we need to do now I will clean it up a bit with a uh, scribe, I think I filmed that, yes I did. So, yeah, clean it like that, as I'm showing. And I actually didn't film it, just showed what I was uh, going to do after this. And apparently I didn't correct my focus. Not smart. Just fiddling with the little lifting holes again. Right, and that's basically it, guys. Uh, that's part three done and dusted. So, as usual, I'm gonna end with this uh, nice overall. Uh, shot of the tank uh, as it is currently built up except I did and add hand holds on the tank or hull itself already but that's because the next part we're gonna be looking at the paint oh and there might be a special Shh. catch you guys later and have fun building bye